Hey, what is going on guys? Inferno LH here, and today I'm going to be going over all the unobtainable items, removed items, and unimplemented items. So if you want to skip to one section of the video, I will have timestamps in the description of this video that you can skip to. First off, let's get started with the bosses that were removed from the game. Now in total, there were three bosses that were in Terraria that have been removed from the game. One of them you probably know, but the other two you may not actually know. So the first boss we're going to go over is Akram. You've probably seen him before. He's a pretty well-known boss that was removed from the game. But Akram was removed in the 1.3 update, so if you played before then you've gotten to fight him before. Now I think the reason they removed him is because he was basically like an Eye of Cthulhu fight. Basically a reskin of the Eye of Cthulhu, but he had like lasers. That was about it. And he did have some items which I will go over later on in the video. If you want to see his stats here, he did 65 damage, his max health was 35,000, and he had a defense of 20. Overall, he wasn't that difficult of a boss. I would say Duke Fishron was harder than him, but he was still pretty challenging, I would say. Now, this is what he looked like in his second form, if you want to see what that is. Alright, so the next boss we're going to go over, which you may not have heard of, is Lepus. Or Lepus. I don't know how you pronounce it, but this boss was only on the mobile version and the 3DS version of Terraria, so a lot of people never actually got to fight this boss. Now what this was is this was an Easter exclusive boss, so you could only fight him during Easter. So basically to spawn him in is you would defeat random enemies around the world, and they would drop these suspicious looking eggs and you would just use that to summon Lepus. Now he also has his own drops that were removed from the game, which I will be talking about later. But this overall was a pretty easy boss to defeat. He only did 50 damage, he only had 9000 health and 8 defense. So you could pretty much fight him at the near the start of the game, he's pretty pretty easy boss. But one thing about him is, well he would just jump around, do melee damage. But like the Mothrons in the Solar Eclipse event, he would lay an egg. And if you don't destroy the egg before it hatched, it would spawn another Lepus. But that's basically all there was to this boss. It was removed in the 1.3 update. Alright, now we have the final boss that was removed from the game. Is Turkor the Ungrateful. Now, like Lepus, this boss was only on the mobile and 3DS versions. So, not many people have fought this boss before. Now, this boss, kind of like Lepus, he was his own event exclusive boss you could only summon this boss in during thanksgiving so basically to spawn him in you would defeat enemies similar to lepus and the, those enemies would drop curse stuffing i believe that's what it was called curse curse stuffing and you would use that to spawn in lepus and he was also a pretty easy boss to defeat he only did 15 damage had 7000 health which is even less than lepus i believe and I guess there's a question mark for his defense, we don't know. But he also has his own drops, which I will be going on later. But overall, this was a pretty simple boss, and he was removed in the 1.3 update. So now that we've gone over all the removed bosses in the game, let's talk about all of the removed enemies in the game. So the very first one I'm going to go over is the Cultist Archer. Now, you may think, well, those are normally in the game. Well, this one... Is a bit different. It's exactly the same thing as those cultists that spawn at the dungeon, but this one has white robes instead of blue robes. I don't know why it's not in the game, but that's basically all it is and all I know about it. Now the next enemy that we have that was removed from the game is the Arc Wyvern. Now this enemy was basically exactly the same as just the normal wyverns we have in the sky, except for it was retextured different and it had more health and did more damage. So that's basically all it was to it. Now you'll notice most of the enemies that were removed from the game are basically just reskins of already existing enemies and that's why they were removed from the game. So let's continue with the next one. Now the next removed enemy that we have is the mythical wyvern. Now as you can see this looks like a Chinese, well this is basically what this was. Is there was a There used to be a Chinese New Year seasonal event in the game and there were NPCs, items, and enemies. And this was one of the removed enemies from the event. Now, the next enemy that we have here is the Albino Ant Lion. Now, I don't really know much about this. I would assume that it's basically the same as the original Ant Lion, but it's just all white. Now, I really haven't heard much about this, so I can't say anything about it. Now, the next removed enemy that we have in the game is the Dragon Hornet. 
Now this basically was just a reskin of the regular Hornet, except for it had a bit more health and did a bit more damage, and that's all there is to this. Now here we have the Orca, which was a reskin of the Shark, did exactly the same thing as a Shark, except for it just looks like an Orca. Alright, the next removed enemy in the game is the Shadow Mummy, basically just a reskin version of the regular Mummy. Another removed Mummy we have is the Spectral Mummy, which once again, is another retextured mummy. Now the next removed enemy is the Spectro Gastropod, which is just a retexture of the regular Gastropod, except for this one does a little bit less damage, but it has more health, which is interesting. All right, now we have the Arc Demon. Now what this was is basically exactly the same as a regular demon, except for it was retextured and its stats are slightly different. Now we have the Dragon Skulls, which were basically the same exact thing as that floating skull in the dungeon, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, all it did was the exact same thing as that regular floating skull in the dungeon, except for it has slightly different stats, and that's it. Now we have the Servant of Akram. Now basically, when you were fighting Akram, these things would spawn around and attack you. They would just fly around, and they did very small amount of damage and had a very small amount of health. And that's really all they did. They basically were the servants of the Eye of Cthulhu. When you fight him, that's basically what these are. Now we have the Shadow Slime. Now basically what this was is, it's pretty much exactly the Corruption Slime for the older versions of the game. But for some reason they decided to change it. So now we don't have a Shadow Slime and we have a Corruption Slime instead. The Dragon Snatcher is also another removed enemy from the game, which is just a reskin of the regular Snatchers in the jungle biome, except for they have, once again, just slightly different stats. The Cursed Hammer was a removed enemy that was in the underground corruption. Now basically, there's enemies that are similar to this in the game right now, there's other cursed weapons that will float around in the underground. So just think of it as exactly that, but it looks like a Cursed Hammer instead. Another removed enemy is the Spectral Elemental. Now basically what this is, is it's pretty much just a reskin of the Chaos Elemental, and that's about all it is. Now the Vampire Miner is another removed enemy from the game, he would just spawn in caves underground, and he's exactly the same as the Undead Miner, except for it's just textured as a vampire. Now we have the Disaster Bunny, which was a minion of Lepus, it was basically just a smaller, weaker version of Lepus that would spawn when you're fighting Lepus. So now moving on to some unimplemented enemies in the game, we have the Exploding Snowman. Now basically what this was, is during the Frost Legion event this was supposed to spawn in, but it was never added to the game. Now I assume what it would do is it would just run up to you and explode, destroy blocks, maybe, I don't know, but that's all I know about it. Now another unimplemented enemy in the game is the Flow Invader. Now this looks exactly like the um, one of the enemies at the Stardust Pillar. So I assume that this is what that was going to be and then they decided to change it for some reason. Okay, so now that we've gone over all the removed enemies in the game, we're going to go through all of the removed items. Now first off, we have the Soul of Blight. Now this would drop from Akram and it was basically just used as another soul to craft some... A few, a few items in the game. Now the next item we have is the rainbow piece. Now this would just randomly spawn, just randomly spawn on the surface. I think it was during St. Patrick's Day, these would randomly spawn. Now I can't remember what they did, but I'm pretty sure you used them to craft just like one or two items. Now we have the Horn o Plenty. This dropped from Turkor, and basically what it was, is it was basically a healing potion that had unlimited uses. So you could use this as many times and this item would not go away from your inventory and it would heal you as much as just a basic healing potion would. Now it did have a cooldown just like every other normal healing potion would have. Now we have the red envelope. Now this was from one of the, the Chinese New Year event. Now I don't know what this item did but it was during you got that from that event. Now we have lesser restoration potions. Now this is another removed potion from the game. I honestly have no idea what this potion did, probably healed you in some sort of way, but it was removed from the game. Now we have all the biome key molds. So before, if you didn't know this, before before 1.3, it 
if you got instead of getting a drop as a biome key to open the dungeon chest you would get a biome key mold and you would have to use that key mold in a few other items like souls to combine them and then craft the key now we have the Weissenbrow, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I believe this was an item that you could drink. Not exactly sure what it did, but it was removed from the game. Now we have the Cursed Stuffing, I mentioned this earlier, you would use this to spawn in the Turkor boss, which is now removed from the game. Now we have the Suspicious Looking Skull, what this was, it looks like the Skeletron spawner, but this would be used to spawn in Akram. Now we have the suspicious looking egg, and this is the final boss spawning item. You would use this to spawn in Lepus. Now we have the alternative obsidian brick wall. Um, it's just a different version of the obsidian brick wall that was, well, removed from the game. Now we have this music box. Now, before 1.3, this music box was in the game. It didn't really work at all, but this is what the music boxes used to be like. Now we have some other removed music boxes, so we have the removed desert, the old theme, uh, the old version of the space theme, uh, we have old version of boss 4, the old version of the ocean, and the old version of the snow biome. Now here we have all the banners that would drop from all these removed enemies in the game, so I'm not going to go too in depth, but here's a list of what the banners are for all those enemies. But now we also have the Akram trophy, which would drop from him when you defeated him sometimes but we also have this strange looking tombstone which is quite of an odd item so basically what this was is if you died with the worm pet which is a removed pet from the game if you died with the worm pet this tombstone would drop i don't know why but it did okay so moving on to the removed pets from the game first off we have the vial of blood now what this would spawn in is it would spawn a pet bat that you can see right here now here we have the broken heart pet, now this would spawn in a cupid, and I believe you could only get this item during the valentine's day event. Now we have the pot of gold pet, and this would spawn in the leprechaun, and what's interesting about this pet is it didn't just follow you around, but it would randomly have a chance to drop coins on the floor that you could pick up, so it is actually a pretty useful pet. I mean, it didn't drop that much coins, but it did drop money. Now we have the cabbage, which would spawn in a pet guinea pig. The holiday bobble would spawn in a pet alpha, or elf, I don't know why it's called alpha. The shiny black slab would spawn in an android pet, and I believe this pet you could only get on the android versions of Terraria. Now we have the petri dish, which would spawn in a pet slime. Now the old walking stick would spawn in a pet old lady. This is a really strange pet, I have no idea what they were thinking when they added this, but it's quite strange, and I believe you would buy this from the cloth ear, and it was one platinum coin, that is very expensive for a pet old lady. Now the golden seaweed would spawn in a pet golden turtle, the beeswax would spawn in a pet tiffia, or basically just one of those hornets that you could get in the jungle. The turkey feather spawns in a pet turkey, this would be purchased from the merchant during the Thanksgiving event. The mysterious package would spawn in a pet drone. You could only get this pet if you bought Terraria from Amazon, so if you have an Amazon version of Terraria, you would get this pet, so it was quite rare. The wolf fangs would spawn in a pet werewolf. The suspicious looking apple would spawn in a pet worm. Which is also how you would get that that weird tombstone to drop from you. And the last removed pet is the brain, which would spawn in a pet zombie. Now that we've gone over all the items, let's go over all the removed weapons from the game. Now the first weapon that I'm going to go over is the Sharanga, which when you would fire any arrows, it would turn them into spectral arrows. Now we have the Roman Candle, which was a ranged uh, magic weapon, and it would shoot out fireworks. So how you got this is you could only purchase it during a Christmas event from the merchant. Now we have the Tizona, which is a really cool sword. It did a decent amount of damage, but it, what it would do is it would give the enemy the, the bleeding debuff, or it would have a chance to give the enemy the bleeding debuff. And this was actually a really cool sword, I wish it was still in the game. Here we have the Tonbogiri, 
which was a removed spear from the game, did a decent amount of damage. But what this would do is it would give the it would give a chance to poison the enemy that you attack. And overall, it was a pretty cool spear, and I actually wish this was still in the game. Now we have the Vulcan Repeater, which was another removed repeater weapon from the game. You would get this after defeating Akram. And what it would do is it would turn any of your suitable ammo into Vulcan bolts, which were a removed ammo type. Now the egg cannon was a pretty interesting weapon, is basically like a rocket launcher, except for it would shoot eggs. Now it did very little damage, 16 damage, actually that's not too bad, but this was a drop from Lepus and it would use eggs as ammunition. The holy hand grenade was a removed explosive from the game. Basically what this was is it was an upgraded version of dynamite, but it, except for it had double the explosive range as dynamite did. And it did 600 damage, so th these were pretty powerful. Here we have the firecracker, which was a thrown weapon. Basically you would throw it at enemies and it would deal a small amount of explosive damage. Basically the same thing as those throwing grenades that you would have. Now here we have a removed type of ammunition in the game, which is the heart arrows. Now these were actually really powerful arrows and could be used throughout the entire game. Now they only did 4 damage, 4 base damage, but what it would do is it would inflict the stunned debuff on an enemy, making it so that they can't that they can't attack for 1.5 seconds every time you hit them. So this was very powerful on boss fights, being able to stun enemies over and over again. And you would basically so to get these was very simple as well. You would just purchase them from the merchant during Valentine's seasonal event. Now we have the Spectral Arrows, which did 16 damage and would cause the Cursed Inferno debuff. Now these were from the Vulcan Repeater, or you could get them from Akram. Now the Vulcan Bolt, the only way that these could be used is from the Vulcan Repeater. Now what they would do is they would do 12 range damage, of course, but these would also cause an explosion on impact of hitting an enemy. Now some of the unimplemented weapons, one of them being the Ice Morn. Now I don't know what this weapon did or how it worked, but here's a picture of it. None of these weapons, uh, I know what they do. They were just, I just have the image of them. So I'll leave it to your imagination on what these did. Here we also have the scythe, which looks pretty cool actually. And then we have the soul scythe, which actually looks really awesome. I don't know why none of these three weapons were added to the game, but they were never added. Now, now that we've gone over all the weapons, let's go over all the equipable items such as armor and stuff like that. So the first armor we're going to go over is the dragon armor. Now this armor set was actually a very good armor set, had 60 defense, and the set bonus would give you 21% increased melee and movement speed, which is pretty good. Now to get this armor, you would get it as a 1 in 9 chance drop from Akram, or it could be crafted from the drops of Akram. Now here we have the spectral armor. This was a mage armor set that was dropped from Akram as a 1 in 9 chance, or it could be crafted from his drops. Now what this would do is it would give you 40 defense, but it would make everything cost 23% less mana. Now once again, we have another armor set, the titan armor set, very similar to the other sets I just talked about. This is a 1 in 9 chance of being dropped from Akram, or it could be crafted from Akram's drops, but this would give you 45 defense and it would give you 28% chance not to consume ammo. And here we have the Oktoberfest sets. This was just a vanity set that could be purchased from the cloth ear during the Oktoberfest event. Now here we have the hero's clothes. Now this item is still in the game, but they changed the, the look of it. This is a vanity set and in the old versions I guess it used to look purple. Meanwhile now it's green. And here also we have the plumber's clothes, which is still in the game, but it looks different in the older versions. So as you can see here, looks a bit different. Now here we have the mythical set. This was a vanity set that you could get from the Chinese New Year event. Here we have the fabulous set, which is another vanity set that you could purchase from the cloth ear during a blood moon. Now what's interesting is you could only buy this set if your character is a female. George's set is the exact opposite of the less vanity set we just talked about, 
and it could be purchased from the Clothier during a Blood Moon, but only if your character is a male. Now we have the Boots of Ostro, which would be a drop from Lepus. Now what this did is it would turn dirt into grass when you walked on it, but it would also let you do bunny hops. Now here we have the Valentine Ring. Now what this would do is when you had this equipped, it would give you 50% health regeneration and increased jump. Now purchase this from the Merchant, but only during the Valentine's Day event. work if it was thrown on the ground and picked up by another player or one is given to you so this did not work unless another person now we have the sparkly wings which were a removed wing in the game you could craft this with souls of flight feathers and souls of blight or you could purchase this from the dryad during a blood moon the festive top hat is a vanity item that could be purchased from the cloth ear but only during Christmas now let's go over all the removed NPCs from the game, but the thing is, well there's actually only one NPC that has been removed from the game, and his name is Mick Moneypants. Now this was going to be an NPC, well was an NPC, during the Chinese New Year event, but the interesting thing about him is he would never actually spawn in the game, even though he was meant to, so, so the only way to get him to spawn in was through modding. And even when you did get him to spawn in, he didn't actually do anything, so if you tried to talk to him, your game would just crash, and that's all that happened. Okay, so now that I've gone over all of the removed and unimplemented items in the game, let's start going over all of the unobtainable items in the game. So there are two different types of unobtainable items. The first type is a version that you can get in any version of the game, so you can get it on console, mobile, PC, any version, no matter what you're playing on, you can get these items. However, the second type, you can only get in a modified version of the game, so I'm playing on TL Pro, so that's how I'm able to get these. But before I go in depth on all of the unobtainable items, if you want to figure out how to get these for yourself in the mobile version of Terraria, I will leave a link in the description of this video to that video where I show you how you can get these. But first off, let's start with the, the unobtainable items you can get in any version of the game. So as you can see here, there's not a lot going on, but first off we have the blue cultist banner, and then we have the, the white cultist banner for each version of that. But then we also have some other removed banners. We have the star cell banner, don't know why that wasn't added to the game. But we also have the poisonous spore banner, and this one's interesting because there's no poisonous spore enemy in the game. Not in the game files or anything, so I guess they were going to add a poisonous spore enemy, and never did. Similar for the Severed Hand banner, there's no Severed Hand enemy in the game files, but there's a banner for it for some reason. Next up we have some blocks, so we have the Pixel Box, which was, there's a, we already have an item like this in the game, but what this was supposed to do is it's supposed to separate wire paths, so when you have wire on the same tile, it doesn't connect. We already have an item like this, and I guess they already, they decided to remove this one and change it up a bit, because they didn't like it, I guess. Now we also have the bone block. Now this item is in the game, but you can't actually get it as an item in your inventory. The only way to place this block normally is by using the bone wand. Next up we have the lunatic cultist treasure bag. I don't know why they never added this into the game, but I guess the lunatic cultist was supposed to drop a treasure bag when you killed him, and now he doesn't and there's just an unobtainable item for his treasure bag. Here we have three different Christmas presents. We have the blue present, green present, and a yellow present. Now we already have a regular present in the game, but before the 1.3 update, these used to be in place for this one present. So these all do the exact same thing, except for they're just different colors. Now we have the boring bow. This is a bow that was going to be in the old one's army event. Don't know why they didn't add it. Now, however, you can get this item in your inventory it doesn't actually work, so if you try to shoot it, it won't even work. Okay, so let's move on to the unobtainable items that you can only get in a modified version of Terraria. So first off, you can see there's a lot more stuff going on here, but we also, for all the lunar classes, Solar, Nebula, Stardust, Vortex, we have an axe, a chainsaw, and a hammer. Now I don't know why these were never added to the game, I actually kind of wish they did because the sprites for these look really cool and I would actually use some of these items so I wish they were actually added in the game. But next up we have the skull bow, 
This is just a regular basic bow that's shaped like a skull. And this one, unlike the boring bow, this one actually works and you can use it. Next up we have the first fractal, I'm sure most of you have heard of this weapon before, but if you haven't, this was originally going to be the final weapon in the game, but they scrapped it and decided to put the zenith in its place. Now we have the phasic warp ejector, I have no idea what this item even is, but it's an unobtainable item so it's on this list. Next up we have two different treasure bags, we have the dark mage treasure bag and the ogre treasure bag. Now what these were going to be is these are enemies that are in the old ones army event and i guess they decided that they at one point they decided that they were going to drop treasure bags and they changed their minds on that and now they don't next up we have some vanity items we have a dynamite backpack kobold dynamite backpack ogre mask now you may be thinking we already have an ogre mask in the game yes but this one is an unobtainable ogre mask because its sprite is slightly different, so I guess they decided to change it at some point. Now we also have the Goblin Mask and a Goblin Bomber Cap. And these were all going to be in the Old Ones Army event. Now we also have a die called the Color Only Die. It's pink here in your inventory, but if you try to equip this die, it just makes your character completely white. So they didn't actually add a color for this. And I wonder what this was going to be, because color it's called color only die, that doesn't even make any sense. Next up we have an Ethereum Javelin, this was going to be in the Old Ones Army event. I have no idea what this item even is, because you can't even use it, but you can get it as an unobtainable item. Next up we have the Sleeping Icon, um, I don't think I really need to say anything about this, uh, I, yeah I don't know what to say. Now we have the Apple Pie Slice. What's interesting about this is you would think this is an edible item, but you can't actually eat it. So if you have it in your inventory, what's interesting is if you hold it, you can see my character is now holding an apple pie slice. And that's all this item even does. It says medium improvement to all stats, but I don't think it even does anything. But anyways, that is going to be the end of today's video. If you did enjoy, could you please like and subscribe, as over 90% of people who do watch my videos are not subscribed so I would really appreciate it. I will also leave the link to my discord server in the description if you want to go ahead and join that. But anyways that is going to be it and goodbye.